Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. If you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, please hit the subscribe button. Now today we're going to take you through another home workout. Hope your training's all going well. Uh, I hope you're all staying healthy as well. Um, a lot of these home workouts have been body weight exercises. Uh, a lot of stuff are across social media has been more like kind of like circuits and trying to basically make it as hard as possible. Uh, if it's fatiguing, it feels like it's working. But however, for athletes, we need to make sure that we're still working towards adaptations. So working towards strength, strength, speed, speed, strength, making sure that we're meeting the demands of our sport. That's why we did the one dumbbell workout the other day. However, I've had a lot of questions around that workout. How do we adapt it to like even lighter dumbbells? You know, you might not have access to heavy dumbbells like I have. How do we adapt to like five kilo, maybe even 10 kilo dumbbells? So today I'm gonna to take you through a workout for lighter dumbbells uh, using like 7.5 kilos. And there's a few different ways that we can uh, work with light dumbbells. We can either go like strength endurance, hypertrophy, or we can go for stability as well. But for today, we're gonna to be primarily working on uh, speed strength or strength speed, depending on how strong you are. It's, uh, all the exercise is gonna be fast and explosive, priming you ready for when we're hitting the gym again, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. We are gonna add some like body weight, core exercises and stability exercises as well. And if you've got any questions or comments about any of the exercises that we use, please hit the comment box below. Okay, so the first exercise that we're gonna do is a dumbbell snatch. Now with a dumbbell snatch, with 7.5 kilos, uh, might be a little bit too light for some adaptation. However, during this time where we're away from the gym, maybe working with some lighter weights, it's a good opportunity to learn a new skill. So this is why we've got this in here today. So with a dumbbell snatch, we're gonna start off with a dumbbell around the hips. We're gonna do a little bit of a counter movement there. So a little bit of dip of the hips and knees. Extend through, and then we're gonna shrug our shoulders. Elbow comes up, and then we're gonna try and straighten up our arm as quickly as possible. So just make sure that you're getting that hip extension through and we're not just flinging the dumbbell up and using our arms, we're trying to use our hips as much as we can. Bringing it across the body, really opening it up, really challenging the core. When we do bring it overhead, make sure that you snap out that arm nice and straight, lock it out as soon as possible. Shoulders pinned down, don't be shrugging up too high, keeping that core nice and tight. Extend the hips. If you notice, I'm having my arm out for balance. I'm also pr producing a lot of force going into that ground to help um, kind of control that force when catching the dumbbell overhead. So like I've mentioned in previous videos, it's important that we have extra core exercises because we're limited on like kind of external load, that loading through the trunk. So it's important that we add in these body weight exercises to make sure that we're keeping our core nice and strong. So we're gonna pair up the first exercise with a standard plank row. And I'm gonna show you a few different variations of the plank row where we can go opposite shoulders, same shoulder, hand to opposite knee, but we're making sure that we're not coming too far up with our knee when we're just going up to level with our hip and meeting in the middle with our hand. Then we can go to, then we can actually bring it through into like a break dancer move, okay? So if you're bored of your typical plank row, as long as you keep it nice and stable, you can use any of them different variations. Okay, so the next exercise, key exercise, actually this is gonna be loaded and we're gonna be working towards strength, speed, speed, strength. We're gonna do some dumbbell jumps. We're gonna have the dumbbells by our side, keep the shoulders pinned back, stand up nice and upright, feet hip width apart. I'm gonna dip down in a counter movement, quick dip of the hips and knees, rapidly extend our hips, chest up, pin the shoulders back, we're jumping up as high as we can. So 
So we're driving through the heels. When we come up, we're keeping them arms nice and rigid. If you notice, my arms are staying by my side. And they're not shrugging up, the arms not coming back. And keeping the shoulder blades engaged. And when I land, I'm dipping my hips back, controlling it through, like a, almost like an altitude landing. Pushing the hips back, knees out over toes. I'm controlling it, standing back up right. Then repeating the movement. We're going to pair that up with an ice skater hop into a vertical hop. The reason why we're going to do this is because you might have limited space, but we're still wanting to challenge that lateral movement, you know, your ability to shift to the side fast and explosively, being able to control that through your glutes and your glute med, and then drive that up into fast and explosive action. So like I said, I haven't got a lot of room here. So I'm going to do, start on one leg, hop across, and then when I land, I'm landing in that split stance position because I want to put as much force uh, into that vertical movement, driving up. If I'm thinking about landing it back into that, that strong position there on one leg, I won't be able to put as much effort through that vertical hop, okay? So we we'll start on one leg, drive across. As soon as my foot touches the floor, I'm dipping into my hip, dipping into my heels, my knees, I'm landing with toe. I'm using my arms as momentum. I'm landing in that split stance position. Okay, so do four on one side, switch it up, and then do four on the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna work on upper body explosiveness. And we're gonna go into a dumbbell split jerk. With the lighter dumbbells, uh, we find it quite easy to do single arm, so we're gonna pair it up, and we're gonna have both dumbbells sitting at the front, and we're gonna power it up into a powerful overhead press. Massive B here. Okay, so we're gonna get into front up position, elbows in front, feet hip width apart, we're gonna dip into our heels, hips back, knees out over toes, Drive it up into powerful hip extension. Extend overhead whilst we drop into that split stance position. Okay, so, main thing is, when we're doing this, is that we drop into that lunge position, we don't press and then drop, we do it simultaneously, we're trying to drop underneath, that bead's getting closer, okay, we drop underneath them dumbbells. Go into that split stance, around about 6% going through the front leg, 40% going through that back leg, we keep our body nice and upright, without hyper extending, we keep that core nice and braced, and we push up overhead, Without hyperextending again, as you notice, I do twist the dumbbells at the top. We're gonna to go for four on your left, then switch it up and go four on your right leg. Okay, next exercise, we're gonna go into an alternate dumbbell row. So again, quite light weights. For pulling exercises, you wanna go much, much heavier, okay? But we're gonna try and work with what we got here. So we're gonna go into a hinge position we're gonna keep our shoulder blade pinned back and we're alter alternating. And it's, by alternating, it makes it a little bit harder. And we're gonna go for a few more reps this time. We're gonna go for 12 on each side. Make sure you're getting in that nice strong position. It's gonna challenge your core, it's gonna challenge your lats and scapular positioning by keeping that dumbbell there all the way through. Make sure you feel that hinge that, that, sorry, make sure that you're hinging, make sure you feel that stretch in your hamstrings as these are your main stabilizers. If you don't feel it in your hamstrings as much, make sure that you're pushing your hips really back, okay? You need to make sure that you feel it in your hamstrings because if your knees come forward and you can't feel it, all that loading's gonna go through your back. So make sure, quick dip of the knees, hinge back, shoulder pin back all the way through, and alternate it each time. Like I said, we're going for 
a little bit more volume on this because it's a little bit challenging to get a strength adaptation from it. So now I'm going to go through um, like single leg exercises now. We're not going to be working on strength, speed, speed, strength through this part. We're going to be working more on kind of strength, a uh, little bit hypertrophy, but mainly it's all about uh, stability as well. So we're going to be working on single leg Romanian deadlift. We're going to be using both dumbbells. We're going to be working on the left leg here. Knee slightly bent over the toe, but then it remains locked. We're going to keep the dumbbells nice and close to our leg all the way through. Shoulder blades pinned back. This toe pointing towards the floor and glutes switched on. So we're keeping neutral position in our hips. And shoulder blades stay pinned back. Make sure that we're not turning in. We're sitting through that front heel. And we're getting towards just past our knee. Then we're driving up. As you see, it's more of a controlled tempo, this. Really working on that stability. Make sure that it's pointing your toes to the floor and maintaining tension through this glute here to make sure that we're not turning this hip out. The further this hip turns out, the less kind of activation that we're getting through hamstrings and glutes through the standing leg. Make sure you get enough space for this. And if you notice, keeping the dumbbells quite close to the legs. The closer that it is to our legs, the more activation through our hamstrings and our glutes, and less going through our back. The further away the dumbbells are, away from your legs, the more kind of activation through our lower back. Okay, so we're gonna pair that exercise up with a core exercise, and an exercise that I like to use is a kettlebell drag. However, I haven't got a kettlebell. I've just got this nice trusty dumbbell here. And we, it's important that we do it side on. We're not just rolling the dumbbell across. And this is good exercise to really challenge the core, but also your lateral stabilizers, your obliques as well. So we're gonna get into that press up position. The dumbbell just sitting just behind one of your arms. And we're gonna drag the dumbbell across to the outside of the other arm. Then again. It's important that we keep our body nice and stable and we're dragging that dumbbell across the floor and we're doing it in a nice controlled tempo as well. Make sure that you are having your hands just level with your armpits. Don't have them aligned with your shoulders so you end up shrugging your shoulders too much. Start using your anterior delts and a lot of people start feeling it in the shoulders a lot more than they do in the core. So have your hands just on line with your armpits, that dumbbell just behind your arm as well. And dragging it underneath. Nice controlled tempo to make sure that we stay nice and stable all the way through that movement. Okay, final two exercises now. I'm going to be working on core strength and a nice little superset that I use to really stop feeling the burn in your core muscles. I'm going to start off with Weighted dead bugs, see where I've got enough space. You're gonna have your legs at 90 degrees. You're gonna have one dumbbell in your hand. And you're going to drop both arms with the dumbbell. And you're just gonna to touch one leg to the floor. But you're trying to keep that leg at 90 degrees all the way through. You're gonna go for eight reps on each side. Then you're gonna go into straight arm straight leg sit up straight away. So toes up towards your shin, get up nice and tall, then we're coming down nice and slow, three, two, one, nice and controlled. You might even want to go to five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. What's important whilst you're doing this is that that dumbbell stays as high as possible all the way through. When you come down, you lower it down as you come down. Keep your legs nice and still toes up towards your shin and you'll start to feel the burn on your core muscles. That's the end of the workout. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. Hope it's been quite helpful for you and hope that you, it's helping you kind of stay motivated and giving you loads of ideas 
to make sure that we uh, keep pushing, keep getting fitter, faster and stronger, even though we're going through this difficult period. If you've got any kind of like questions or wanting some guidance about like training or your coaching or business or whatever, please get in contact. I want to help you through this difficult period. Uh, let's all do it together. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video.